And we have a special guest here joining us for the entire hour, Surat Sethi. He's managing partner at DCLA and a CNBC contributor. Good to have you with us. Good to be here. It's been a, a, a pretty good start to the year. It has. It, it has. And what's nice is to see the rally broadening. So, it just so it's not, not just the Magnificent Seven or the less than Magnificent oh, the Seven, mag maybe five. five. Uh, yeah. um, no, I think what you're seeing is at least the breadth of the market improving. And you're seeing other areas of the market actually attracting capital, not just the bond market as well with rates where they are. So whether it's in commodities, healthcare, financials, uh, industrials, I think you're seeing some of those sectors that have lagged actually see capital flowing in there. And companies actually doing pretty well. So I think that combination, you know, along with the overhang now of how long are rates going to be where they are. So well, we, I think we talked about the Magnificent Seven becoming the Magnificent Five. Let's b b bear down on that. We begin with two widely held names that are both having a bit of a rougher start to the year, Apple and Tesla. And here to help us dig a little deeper in what's going wrong for these two heavyweights is Tony Sakanagi, senior IT and hardware analyst. Tony, welcome. Good to have you with us. Good afternoon, Tyler. Why don't we start with Tesla? What's going on there? Um, you know, the company entered the year with a very rich valuation multiple. Um, and it's in a period where it may not grow much. Uh, last year, earnings were down. This year, uh, earnings will very likely be down. And the automobile business this year may not even grow. And unfortunately, 2025 is likely to be the same. So you have a stock that's trading at, depending on where you think numbers are this year, somewhere around 60 times uh, earnings, um, and there's no growth. And, and you were talking about how there have been shifts in the Magnificent Seven. I think you know part of the challenge for Tesla and to a certain degree for Apple and why you're seeing investors vote with their feet is, uh, neither are growing this year, and uh, it's tough paying up for companies that aren't growing. So there's clearly, um, you know, concern for Tesla uh, in the near to medium mm -hmm. term about its ability to grow. Ability to grow. Uh, they seem to have put a lot of emphasis on a on lower priced automobiles, including a new new uh, model that I think is coming out next year, uh, the Model Two, if I have it correctly. Do you think going down in price is a long term win for this company or not? A Tesla absolutely has to make its cars more affordable if it wants to become an industry leading car company. Um, you know, right now, Tesla's models are largely at $40,000 and above, and that's a relatively narrow market. So Tesla's aspirations and its valuation suggests that it's going to be a dominant car company, you know, potentially as big as, you know, Toyota or Volkswagen, who are the biggest car companies in the world today. But in order to do that, you have to appeal to a broader set of consumers mm -hmm. rather than, you know, relatively affluent consumers. So it absolutely has to go down market. And the challenge is it's going to take some time. The car will likely only debut at the end of 25. It'll take some time to ramp that car. So Tesla may not see, you know, real volume benefit from that car till late 26 or even 2027. And that's a long time for is investors that, to wait. Is that why BYD, though, is outpacing Tesla right now, that they have more models to choose from for lots of different consumers? Absolutely. I mean, you know, Tesla really has four models and two of them are above $70,000. BYD has almost 30 models and they start in China with micro EVs at under $10,000. So um, they're certainly able to, you know, and they largely play in the Chinese market, offer a full uh, suite of products from, from low end to more expensive ones. They have a, they just introduced a luxury uh, car that's over $150,000. So they are providing enough choice to offer the entire marketplace, which Tesla is not. It's really playing in, in the luxury niche market at this point. 